we will be going through the wire payments function on this Kosha Online for Business platform. Now, with the wire payment service, you'll be able to send both local and international payments on the system. However, before we actually go into the platform, what I would like to highlight are key terms as it relates to wire payments. Now, one of the main functions of this online system is to send the local wires. What this entails is that you're able to send foreign currency payments to other accounts to banks locally. You won't be able to send a US dollar or a GBP payment across to another bank via the RTGS nor ACH network. It will have to be done via the wire payment option. Additionally, for all of these local wire payments, it is mandatory for an intermediary bank to be on the payment. Okay. Now, additionally, I would just like to add that for the intermediary banks, it is not mandatory for international payments. However, if you do have that information, it would be good to enter it while you're doing the payment. Okay. Now, one of the first things that I would like to do on the, as it relates to the platform is to ensure that whenever you're enrolled for the service is that your users are enrolled for the service also. Now, as a company system administrator by default, once a service or feature has been added, it will automatically be added to your user profile. However, if you have additional users on the system and they require this service, especially if there is a creation and approval method on this platform, you would have to enable that service for that user. Now, what I'm gonna do is walk you through how to ensure that the users who, are, who should be doing wire payments are enabled. Now, when you sign in, all you would have to do is select administration, click on the user who you want to modify or view their profile. Once you're on the user profile, you're gonna to go to the lower left of the screen. You're gonna click on select action, modify and submit. Now, once you're on the user profile screen, what you're going to need to select is wire payments, sorry, wire recipients, and you're going to select maintain. Now, when you select maintain, that user will have the ability to create a wire recipient. Additionally, if the wire recipient feature requires an approval and the approval box is there, you can go ahead and select that also. Then you would go down to templates. Because what you can do is to group the wire, well, not group the wire payments, but you can group um, a wire beneficiary and an intermediary bank into a template. If that is, if that's the way forward, you can go ahead and select access and maintain for templates also. And finally, you will need to select access and maintain for wire payments for users who will be on the system to create wire payments. Additionally, if they're going to also be an approver for the wire payment service, you would also select approve. All right, so that's the first thing that I would really like to clear up because sometimes the services are added to the platform, but you're not seeing it or a user on your profile is not seeing it. So now we're going to go into the meat of the matter, which is how to create a wire payment. Now, basically, in the initial stages, there are three steps. One, we would have to ensure that the beneficiaries bank and the intermediary bank is created on the system. Once they're created on the system, you no longer need to create them again. Additionally, say you create a Bank of America on the system and it has the US SWIFT code in it. It doesn't matter the address of the bank. Once it's the, once this is the same Bank of America with the same SWIFT, you won't need to recreate that bank regardless of the address, okay? Very important. Secondly, in creating the, a wire payment, you would then have to create the wire recipient or the beneficiary on the system. And then finally, you can go ahead and create the wire payment. Now, the good thing is once you've created the bank and the beneficiary on the system, going forward, all you would need to do is to just go ahead and create the wire payment. And that's it. It takes less than a minute. Now, how to create a bank, right? Now, whenever you're gonna do a wire payment, 
you would normally have the wire recipient or the beneficiary's information on hand, which includes their address and account information along with their bank and their bank's address. Now to create this bank on the system, all you need to do is to go to the payments tab, select banks, and to the far right, you're gonna see a tab there that says add bank. You're gonna click on that, and below, you're gonna see an area that says bank information to be completed. Now, when you're completing this section, it is important to note that you will just put the bank name in the bank name field along with the SWIFT in all uppercase. The routing number is not mandatory. You will complete the address portion of the screen, includes the city, country, state, and zip code is optional. Once you've completed all the fields and you feel and you, everything is correct, you can then proceed to select add to personal bank list here at the bottom. Now, once you've added the bank or banks to the system, because again, if it requires an intermediary bank, you would have to also create the intermediary bank at that stage. Now, once you've created the bank on the system, this is where we'll go ahead and create the wire payment beneficiary or the recipient on the system. Now, to do so, what you'll do again is to go to payments, select recipients, and to the far right, you're going to see two tabs, import recipient and create recipient. For wire recipients, you can only create them on the system. So you're going to select create recipient. When you get the option to select the recipient type, please make note that you, are, that you will normally be given three options if you have like the direct deposit, the disbursements, and wire payments. For wire recipients, you definitely have to select wire in the drop down menu, then select set recipient type. So a recipient created on the system for a disbursement cannot be used in a wire payment. Only recipients set up or designated as a wire recipient Will, you will be able to select when you're doing the wire payment. Now, in creating the wire recipient, there are some mandatory fields here. The first one being the recipient name, of course, and the second one, the recipient ID. The recipient ID is a unique field and you can enter anything in that field to easily identify that recipient, which makes them unique. So it can be their TR number, their social security number, no, a nickname, anything can be used to e that can be used to easily identify this recipient. Now, unlike creating an individual or business recipient where the address field is not mandatory for all wire recipients, it is a mandatory section. If you notice here, everything here has an asterisk. So it is important that you have the beneficiary's information and address on hand. Sorry. Next, you go down to the account information section. Now for this area, the account type, whether it's a checking or savings, it's not mandatory. So you can always omit that section. However, for the account number field, you're gonna to have to enter the account number as is. And if it is a designated IBAN account, you would just select that checkbox. And IBAN accounts are normally accounts that are maintained at banks within Europe. Lastly, you will just select the currency. And below, once you've selected wire recipient as a, um, as a recipient type, what will come up is the list of personal banks or the banks that you have created on the system. So if you had created a Bank of America prior, you're going to see Bank of America here and you can just select it from the drop down menu. However, say it's a local wire recipient that you're gonna be um, paying. What you can do, where, where you see search banks, you can always select the drop down menu, select domestic banks, and then select update list, and you will see all the listing of the available commercial banks. And you can just select the respective bank to add to the, pay, to the recipient. Once you've completed, you can just select submit and confirm and the recipient will be correct, um, created. If it requires an approval, it will be on the system pending approval. Now, 
in regards to the wire payment, it's the first two steps again. So one, you'll go to payments. Then you're going to select create payment this time. So you won't select recipients nor bank. You're going to go directly to create payment. Now, once you're on the create payment screen, under one time payment, you're going to select the drop down menu and you're going to select wire payment and then create payment beside of that. If it is that you had created a template for that wire recipient or when a wire recipient, but wire beneficiary, sorry, you can select the beneficiary from the drop down menu above, which is under select template. Now, once you've selected wire payment and create and selected create payment, you will be brought to the payment screen. Now, this is where you would complete this the section, which includes the wire payment name. So you can even put back the beneficiary's name here. The date that you want the payment to be processed. So you remember, you can always future date the wire payment. OK. You're going to select the account that you want to make the payment from. Now, please note, if you have selected a US dollar account, it will draw directly from that. And you're making a US dollar payment, it will draw the exact funds from your US dollar account. However, if you're making a payment from another currency account, the equivalent of that day, that's the value that will be debited from your account. Okay. After that, you will select the amount that you're going to end, that you're going to uh, pay, the currency of the transaction, and the remittance info. So this would include the reason for the wire payment, along with any additional information you would like to add. Now, if it is that you're adding a recipient and the name, when you're trying to add the recipient, the name was too long, you can always enter the full name in this remittance info area. You can also enter the routing number or any further credit to information within the remittance info area. Now, if it is that an intermediary bank is necessary for this payment or mandatory, you can select add intermediary bank here. And this will give you the listing of all the banks that you had created, not the domestic banks. Only the banks that you had created on the system, you will see appear once you select add intermediary bank. And you can only add one mean intermediary bank to the payment, only one. Now, once you've, once you've found the bank to be added, you just select the checkbox and you're gonna see the option below to add intermediary bank. And once you've done that, you will see it pop up here. Next, we would have to add the beneficiary or the wire recipient to the payment. For that, you will just select add recipients and a listing of only wire recipients will be available on the system. And you can please note that you can only add one beneficiary to a wire payment. Now, once you've found the wire recipient, you just select the checkbox, select add recipient, and both the intermediary bank and the beneficiary will be in the payment. What you're going to do next is to just submit and review all the information before hitting confirm. Once you've hit confirm, the payment will be sent for processing. And again, going forward, once you've created a bank and a recipient on the system, there's no need to recreate them each time. So every time that you're going to do a wire payment to these recipients, all you would have to do is just go to payments, create payment, select wire payment, and then proceed to just fill in the information here, submit and confirm. Okay. And basically, that is it for the wire payments.